Hello, this is Eric of Not BIOS, and in today's video, we're going to learn more about the MSI MPG 321 QRF QD. And of course, we're also going to learn how to use the MSI KVM. So, whether you have the 4K model or this model, and what to do, and a bit what not to do. Now, if you want to learn more, of course, I'm not going to repeat myself multiple times in every single video. Part two video of the review, link will be in the description below or playlist. Now let's get started. Now to start things off, what are my particular thoughts on this computer monitor? Well, it is actually really good for gaming and I quite enjoy it. However, there are some updates that could be done on MSI's part to actually improve this. They use the same algorithm for pixel for pixel refreshing as they do on their VA panels and it's quite obvious and if they actually change it to make it more to this Inelux model of monitor it can improve things such as the possibility avoiding the possibility of image retention in blur busters of course gaming that's not a problem but still my firmware version is 030 so she uploaded this video and then AF commented about local dimming zones and HDR 600 and I was thinking wait a minute in Windows there's no dimming zones that I could see turning on HDR in Windows it seems like we may have found something I'm gonna go to black screen and I'm gonna use a white box to move it around the screen it seems that there is filled array local dimming but you need HDR specifically turned on to see it. So as we see, the screen's quite black with uh, HDR on, which is actually pretty good. Now I pull this box up and all of a sudden we see the glow appear from the side and it's going along the top. It's not exactly the best type of thing, but of course that's only zones. You can see it right in the top corner here. As I move it along, there is some form of local dimming. So, yeah, we've got local dimming with HDR and HDR has to be turned on Windows to see it. Pretty cool stuff. But you can see, why do we need light up here when the object's up here? And that's what I don't like about field array local dimming. I sit corrected. And how about image uniformity? That has changed since the first review of this monitor. As I expected, high-end IPS monitors tend to improve on uniformity of panel, somewhat at least. Compared to my part two review, black uniformity has improved. I used to have light clearly showing on the bottom right-hand corner of this monitor, and now it is generally pretty decent. So black uniformity is about average or so, and I don't notice when movie watching or normal use at all, like I actually noticed on my MSI MAG VA panel that is, which I also reviewed, and I'll have links in the description of that as well if you wanna see that. And you'll notice that little red dot, that is actually a stuck pixel I have on this particular monitor, and since my screen is completely black and the camera's looking for light, it's made that stuck pixel even more obvious. During normal use, I don't notice it, and it seems to be noticeable only on black or really dark screens so here we can see some usb ports we have a usb port here and we have another one here connected and i'll show that in a moment and right here we actually have our headphone jack so we can actually listen to music or whatever through our 3.5 millimeter when connected through display port to the monitor itself hdmi couldn't get working it might have something to do with the nvidia drivers i have a 3070 graphics card and i believe this is a mic in port if i'm not mistaken and what is this connected to this connects to my speaker right beside here. Otherwise, I have to run the cable all the way from here, all the way underneath the desk where I have my computer tower, and this is a lot more convenient. So what if I had a headset I was a gamer? I think here is a lot more convenient than going all the way underneath the desk or wherever your computer tower is, having it close up by your screen for uh, game streaming and whatnot, then, uh, well, you decide. What's gonna happen is the audio is gonna stop once it goes to standby. So if that is not something you want, you may want to leave it connected to your computer tower. So if I fall asleep, I personally cannot fall asleep to music playing. So for me, 
I want to stop playing sound, which is absolutely perfect for me. So you may wonder, how does the KVM switch work on this MSI monitor, or even the 4K version? Well, I'm about to show you. And by the way, connect your devices to the monitor. So your keyboard and mouse has to be connected through the USB hub, or else it won't work. I just gave you one of the answers. So if you're having problems, you do not have your keyboard or mouse connected to your computer monitor's USB ports. And that's the first mistake a lot of people are making. And of course, you connect to the Type-C to Type-C port, the cable connected, well, included with your monitor. However, I'm actually using a different one because my particular computer case, I'm not gonna use an adapter, I'm actually trying a different cable that I know is actually rated for the performance. This is USB-C to USB Type-A going to my Gigabyte B450 computer right here. And just for show, nothing's connected except this USB-A cable, the power, and the screen, this other screen here. And I did not get picture-in-picture picture working, but then again, I do not have Thunderbolt to get display through USB-C, or else this probably would work just fine where I have a side-by-side -side display. But you can run both computers with one keyboard and mouse. Right now, it's not gonna work yet because our source has not changed. So I have to go into the computer monitor menu. Let's zoom up on this. Okay. Let's go into this menu. And we are gonna click on here, go to, down to KVM. It's kind of hard to control this, mind you, with one hand like this. And we have to change to type C for our KVM because we're connected to type C. And now if I go to this computer, watch what happens with the cursor. We have a cursor moving and let's go down just slightly so we can see and my keyboard is working on this computer. But it doesn't work on both at the same time. So that's one thing to note. And of course your hub ports will work with the USB-C connected for the power. That's pretty freaking sweet I honestly think. Now you know how to use your KVM switch on MSI. Are you a content creator looking to up your game? Check out AE Juice. In fact, I use the facts from AE Juice for my own videos. A lot of my thumbnails have their emojis because, hey, it works and not overly expensive. Sometimes they have sales and they have the I want it all bundle. So make sure it's compatible with your editing software before purchasing. Or are you looking for more music and sound effects beyond what AE Juice sells? and you want a lifetime subscription, mm -hmm. check out audio. Links in the description below. And in fact, that's what I also use is audio for my music and sound effects. So maybe you didn't see my part two review video. You might be wondering, what about strobing? Well, strobing is useless. Strobed image at 175 hertz in slow motion, 120 hertz, 144 hertz, 165 and 175 hertz strobed. So in terms of modes, you may wonder, do I run in OC mode, which is 175 hertz or 165? Well, I've been running 165 because I want to leave it at 10 bit color all the time. Honestly, I don't recognize the difference in image quality whatsoever having it 165. So feel free to run 175. One thing a lot of people had a question with is wall mounting. How do you wall mount this or basically any MSI monitor? Well, this particular monitor itself is a little bit different than some because some MSI monitors have all four screws behind the stand. This particular one has, well, here's an image, two attached behind the stand and two in a little bag, which is very strange. So it's 100 by 100 millimeter mounting. Here's a standoff. This is including the bag. You have four of these. This goes into the monitor itself. So this can go into the back of your monitor for mounting. All four of them in your 100 by 100 millimeter mounts. Next, this wall mount is gonna go against these screws. So this can be your monitor right here. My hand is my, your monitor. Then you got the standoff, the monitor here, and the standoff's holding it off the monitor. And your four screws are gonna go on this side. If you have any problems with mounting, the holes are too big, you're gonna to have to get some washers. And it's simple as that for mounting this particular monitor. HDMI, of course, is not gonna get your full speed. I believe it's 144 hertz or something like that at 1440p. I'll put that above. That's different than I just said, but yeah. Night vision, as I showed in my review originally, 
can saturate color tones and it will get those black levels more under control. But I recommend just setting it through Windows, which I'll show right away here in a moment. Now, Gamma. How about Gamma? That's one thing that we need to change. And I found through the NVIDIA control panel, it should be fairly similar in AMD, for the AMD control panel, you can adjust your Gamma. And I had to do this with the LG 27G L850. It's had to adjust the gamma because a lot of monitors don't include a gamma setting. It's not like it's a huge difference, but that way I can avoid night vision if I want to brighten up just a bit because there is a bit of black crush. So my gamma, I changed to 1.1. I suggest not ever putting it higher than 1.2 on the control panel, but say between 1.1 and 1.12 is a good happy medium where you get a bit more brightness. So if you actually change it higher than 1.2, the problem that happens is you lose a lot of contrast and a lot of that strong image quality feel and that just ruins your experience compared to what your experience was with this monitor otherwise because the strong contrasty colors makes everything pop. And honestly, that's the biggest reason to get this quantum dot monitor over some old cheapo, El Cheapo monitor. If you're gonna pay the price, you might as well get the feature of it. Well, first of all, the settings out of the package are just gosh darn awful. I would not use the recommended settings that are out of the package. Eco mode, yeah, saturated, just looks bad. The black tones are bad. Out of the package, I wouldn't accept this whatsoever. However, once you change settings, it can be a lot better. Game mode, don't even bother with that. A lot of people are like, how do I get to game mode? Well, you gotta change out to eco mode. But eco mode settings, if you go across there, professional is a lot smarter. Look here, the color tones are extremely overshot. And right here, the dark tones right here are too crushed together. And this is out of the package what you get. It's not a good experience. In fact, the camera doesn't show how bad it really is because this looks so much darker than it is on camera, the orange color. Now, if I go to professional, go to pro mode, because right now we're on eco, I have to accept the change. So now I can go to my other modes. The adaptive zinc, you are better off in a lot of cases leaving it off. Whether you have the 4K model or this model, yeah, the Quantum Dot 4K, they make a 4K version if you didn't know. It's best to leave adaptive zinc off in several cases. You might notice the occasional flickering happening. I didn't really notice in any games whatsoever, but I might have noticed in The Witcher not really thought anything of it. But when I was actually doing my video editing, which I was using Magic's Vegas, in the gray like gray area where there's no objects, I could see flickering. If you turn adaptive zinc off, you can solve that problem uh, altogether if you have any flickering issues. And at high frame rates, not a problem. I don't suffer from any image tearing at high frame rates. However, if you are low frame rates, once you're below 48, it doesn't matter because it's turned off anyways. But if you're lower frame rates, adaptive zinc is quite important to have to avoid image tearing. At least it can be. So image retention means you can get, say, um, if I go on Blur Busters, this is specifically a test, not I've never seen it in a game. You can actually get the little squares that are white checkerboard. So this is the Blur Busters ghosting test. If I pause this, it will look blurry, mind you. I'm running the camera at 30 FPS. This is at 165 FPS right now. So no matter what the refresh rate, these white dots will have image retention on my Windows screen. So I'll exit this, and especially on a black screen, I'll see these white dots remain. So let's get rid of this. Do we see these white dots here? Let's zoom in. It's not going to be too obvious because I have to brighten the camera screen up. But we should be able to see those dots here between the O and let's go down the screen a bit. We should be able to see them here, here, and then possibly down here. And these will go away after a while. It's just that this is caused by a charge within the panel itself. And this is where MSI needs a new algorithm. You can't just use the same algorithm on this as a VA panel and everything else. When you get the high refresh rates, they have to change this. I contacted MSI, so this is hopefully a firmware update that's gonna fix this. 
you should now be clarified on what's good and bad about this monitor and I showed every possible thing that was really possibly bad make it maybe sound worse than it should be because this is a really good gaming monitor now if you want to get me a coffee I have a coffee link in the description below AE juice audio welcome for people that are content creators links all in the description below thanks again for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day this is not bios tech and hardware let's not get testy like my bestie let's not get testy oh ho, ho. let's not get testy oh, ho, ho.